I think after today's episode of Side Flick, we's gonna have to rename the show to Tea Time, cause oh, we got so much of it to spill. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. We've got a lot of movie news to discuss, even some yes, like I said, tea to spill on this episode of Side Flick. Ooh. I'm becoming one of those makeup drama channels. What we're going to be talking about today is the title for the third Happy Death Day movie, an update from Tom Holland about the upcoming Uncharted movie, and a big update twist to this whole Warner Brothers versus Ray Fisher situation. So many of you guys leave your opinions down below. I think there's going to be a lot of juicy comments with some of the stories we talk about today, but do let me know how you feel about all the other topics we discuss. Don't be forgetting to hit that like button if you're enjoying the new tea spill of side flick and yes i am repping some of my new parody merch here on the channel you guys can check it out this one i really like to do it it's the old sonic design after he got fired and realizes there's a second movie coming that he ain't gonna be part of so if you want sad little sonic on your body go ahead and check out the merch in the description but if you're not able to purchase any merch i understand time's tough at least go ahead and check out some of the other movie news we've been doing on the channel outside of side flick we had our first look at the 3d animated super pets movie with crypto the super dog it's a short little teaser trailer but it's a pretty cool look at that movie and also yesterday we just got revealed the villain for ant-man 3 so check out those videos if you guys haven't already first story we're gonna dive into is an update on the upcoming uncharted movie that's gonna star tom holland as nathan drake now this movie is currently shooting right now in a foreign country that is unknown to us tom holland who was bored on a sunday afternoon when he said he had the day off from the set decided to give us just the smallest little update that it makes me kind of happy. How's filming going? Filming is going so well. It is going so well. The film is like everything I would dreamed it would be. I mean, I don't know if you guys played the games, but I was such a huge fan of the game. And it's been going so well. I do have the biggest bruise of all time, though, on my leg. But it's in a bit of a revealing area for Instagram Live. And I think I would get shut down by Instagram. Um... But yeah, it is, it's a glorious bruise. Not only is it really awesome for Tom Holland to go and say that he's so proud of the way the movie's coming out, but that he's a fan and has played the video games himself just adds another layer to him playing the character of Nathan Drake. I know there's still people upset and angry that he's playing that character since he seems too young for it, but you guys gotta remember, this is sort of a prequel series to the video games, and in the video games, we got to see young Nathan Drake being mentored by a character that's gonna be played by Mark Wahlberg. With Tom Holland's brief comments on the up-and-coming Uncharted movie, do you believe him? Do you trust where it's going? And are you looking forward to the movie? Jumping into a horror movie franchise that, well, I wouldn't even consider a horror movie franchise anymore, the Happy Death Day series is seeming to want to continue on with the third movie, and we had the director recently talk about what the title and direction for that film would be. Now, Christopher Landon, who is the director of the first two Happy Death Day movies, and was recently doing an interview with Empire concerning his latest movie coming out this year entitled Freaky, another Blumhouse horror comedy where a serial killer switches body with a high school teenager. And you know what? The trailer seemed kind of fun. Even in this interview, he hinted that the movie Freaky and Happy Death Day are in the same universe. Not sure what that could mean for the future of the franchise, but that's pretty cool to know. As far as the third film and the title for it, this is what he had to say. The idea for the third film is not set in the same day, if that's a big spoiler. So it can happen later later we're not up against a really difficult clock right now the other movies were hard because they were set in the exact same day so everybody had to look the same be the same the pressure is off there i guess i can give you the title without pissing everybody off it does not have a three in there but it's called happy death day to us that is the working title so that's kind of cool on some of the details involving happy death day the first two movies like he said took place on the exact same day and this third film will seem to take over a couple of days or will be a few days after the events of the first two films. I am a fan of the first movie. I got a couple little chuckles out of it, especially since I am a big fan of slashers. I just wasn't all into the second movie and the complete 180 direction it took where it focused more on a sci-fi comedy because I was really drawn into it for the horror elements and what you were doing with that. And him even talking now that the movie is going to be so much more different then they're going to take it to a whole different genre. 
I can't even classify this as a horror movie anymore when it started off with a guy in a mask holding a knife chasing somebody down. I respect them for wanting to go different and really expand with it, but I gotta be honest, I'm just not excited for a third movie, and even he himself says Jason Blum, the head of Blumhouse Studios, right now is focused on other projects. Even though he is passionate about the Happy Death Day series, this is kind of being put on hold for right now, and it makes sense because the second movie did not do as well as the first, maybe because they didn't make it a horror movie. Movie, but whatever for you guys out there how do you feel about happy death day 3 and the title happy death day to us jumping into some superhero movie news we have another minor update on the upcoming flash movie that is set to come out in 2022 you guys know i've been insanely excited for this flash movie we're getting because yes it's gonna have two batmans in it both ben affleck and michael keaton's batman and in the weekend when i made that video talking about the dc super pets animated film and the first look teaser it was because we got the second part of DC fandom. Now there wasn't really any huge news that dropped or major reveals. It was mainly meant for fan interaction but along with that the producers for this Flash movie went ahead and answered a couple of fan questions revealing some minor details that I think are pretty big. When asked about how this Flash movie will affect the future DCU, producer of the Flash movie went ahead and said, well I want you to go see it so I'm not going to tell you a lot but what I will tell you is that it is a ride. It's going to be fun and exciting and there's a lot of DC characters in it. Flash is the superhero of this film because he is the bridge between all these characters and timelines and in a way it restarts everything and doesn't forget anything. That is a whole lot to unpack there okay not only did this producer go ahead and mention that we will see a lot of dc characters which that's kind of what we're expecting from this flash movie we thought some of the big surprises would be that flash would be interacting with michael keaton's batman and ben affleck's batman but along with that we're gonna get a whole bunch of other DC characters. Basically, any actors from the live action DC properties, whether it was an old TV show, an old movie, if they're still alive and kicking and acting, they could possibly show up in this Flash movie. This is something I wanna make a video on because I think there's so many interesting characters that because of the multiverse could just pop up in this Flash movie for a couple of cameos. But the main part I wanna focus on right now for Side Flick is that the producer says that this Flash movie will be the restart for the DCEU basically saying it's the reboot for this DC cinematic universe. And that's kind of what we've all been expecting. You don't do the Flashpoint Paradox storyline that involves time travel where Barry Allen is messing with the timeline and not somehow use that to fix your messiness of the DC slate. By doing this, they have a shot to go ahead and start fresh by keeping some of the actors they love, possibly changing others out. Like we've heard, this is Ben Affleck's last run as Batman, making it sound like by the end, of this the DCU's version of Batman will be Michael Keaton. I'm gonna be very curious to see how they reset the universe, what they decide to change, what they decide to keep, but how do you guys feel about the Flash movie being this sort of reboot for the DC universe? <sighs> All right now guys this is the part of the show where you get your teacups out and your crumpets because we about to spill some drama. Now you guys know, usually on my channel, I don't like to talk about drama. I don't like to talk about actors hating other actors. I mainly want to celebrate movies and look at the positive side of filmmaking just because world's already dark enough. But this whole situation right now going on with Warner Brothers and Ray Fisher is so fascinating to me. I just can't ignore it. I'm gonna do my best to give a really quick summary of what's going on before we get into this major mind-blowing update. But basically what had happened is that Ray Fisher, the actor who plays Cyborg, came forward and said that Joss Whedon, the director that they hired to replace Zack Snyder to finish the Justice League, was an abusive tyrant of a director that was really mean and hurtful to the cast. It was just apparently so abusive towards the cast that Ray Fisher demanded Warner Brothers to create an investigation on the situation. Since then, Warner Brothers says they have opened up an investigation and are looking into it, even though Ray Fisher claimed that they've hired basically a PR investigation team to kind of shut him up, take the flames down, and make everything just look spotless and okay in the Warner Brothers studios. And up until this very point, we only had Ray Fisher be the only actor of that Justice League cast mention how abusive the director was. So there was people out there saying, 
What if he's lying? What if he's just saying this because he's an actor who hasn't gotten work since Justice League? They didn't give him his solo cyborg movie that they promised him. So what if this guy's just pissed and out for revenge? That no longer seems to be the case because now we've had Jason Momoa come out and back up Ray Fisher and say that everything he's saying is correct. But what makes this even more crazy and mind-blowing to me is the day that Ray Fisher announced to the public that the director and some of the behind-the-scenes executives executives at Warner Brothers were abusive and mean towards him, reports came out that Jason Momoa was just cast in a live action Frosty the Snowman movie where he would be voicing Frosty the Snowman and he'd be working again with those executives at Warner Brothers that Ray Fisher claimed were so evil. Again, making people believe at the time was Ray Fisher lying. If these people were so abusive, why would Jason Momoa want to work with them again? And now we know Warner Brothers completely made up that story to distract people from Ray Fisher's allegations. This is what Jason Momoa had to say yesterday on his Instagram. This has to stop and needs to be looked at. Ray Fisher and everyone else who experienced what happened under the watch of Warner Brother Pictures needs a proper investigation. I just think it's effed up that people released a fake Frosty announcement without my permission to try to distract from Ray Fisher speaking up about the sh way we were treated on the Justice League reshoots. I stand with Ray Fisher. And again, this is just another turn in this insane tea spill with Warner Brothers versus Ray Fisher. Because not only is this now definitive proof that Warner Brothers knew there was a problem and they were trying to cover it up by giving the media this fake story, this fake movie that doesn't exist that I reported on for you guys on Side Flick that Jason Momoa was part of a Frosty the Snowman movie that now was never real. This was a story that was supposed supposed to sound wild, that was supposed to sound crazy, so that hopefully people would ignore everything Ray Fisher was saying. And now Jason Momoa is putting his career on the line and future with Warner Brothers to stand with Ray Fisher and man, I cannot applaud these two even more. Like, you don't realize what Jason Momoa is risking right here. These are the guys who are responsible for signing the paychecks for Jason Momoa when he stars in Aquaman 2 that is still said to be happening. And like I even told you guys in a previous update to this tea spill that Cyborg is supposed to show up in the Flash movie as a cameo, but with all this drama, they don't know if they're gonna go ahead and cast him or not. I just still can't believe Warner Brothers went ahead and made up this fake story to distract the public. Like... I over here trying to avoid fake articles and rumors all the time, and when we finally get one from the actual source, even they are lying? How am I supposed to do my job? And like, yeah, I'm kind of heartbroken and deceived. I'm not going to get to see a Frosty the Snowman movie where he's going to say, my man. But even more wild, this story and this tea spill is not over in the slightest. We're going to get more updates. We're going to hear more about this. How do you guys feel about this whole situation with Warner Brothers versus Ray Fisher and Warner Brothers making up this Frosty the Snowman movie? But that is just all the movie news we have going on right now, guys. I need your opinions down below on everything we've discussed here today. What did you like? What didn't you like? Don't forget to check out the merch in the description. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at 3C Film Review. As always, I'm Chris. Take care.